Hey guys, so today, yeah, it's something a little bit different. I'm going to take you through my full koi journey from my first pond uh, to my new pond, which is 12,000 litres, um, and how I built it. Um, it's just a quick series um, just to show you my koi journey from start to finish. So uh, sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Hey guys, so yeah, my name is Jamie, this is Keeping It Coy, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. So yeah, as uh, as you just heard, I'm going to take you through my full journey from start to finish. Um, there's been some ups, there's been some downs, there's been some good times, and there's been some bad times. So uh, it's took me a while to edit this little series and put it together for you, so sit back, relax, it's winter, not a lot else to do outside, it won't stop raining. Um, can't get me jump guards finished as you can see it's still peeing it down out there and i hope you enjoy it as much as i did hey guys so yeah this was my first pond build and um, that i did when i moved into this property you can see that i'm just laying out the scaffolding boards to get an idea of size marking it all out you can see next uh, what i did for extra support i dug some holes and put in some concrete uh, fence posts they're the standard four foot fence posts and they were only 18 inches out of the ground so they were in deep and they were concreted in as you can see there now uh, you'll notice the back post was slightly higher than the three at the front there and that was because i was building a, a raised area at the back as you can see here once all the digging was done all the soil that i dug out was put in the three flower beds there you can see there i was i filled the base of the pond with sand because my gosh was there an awful lot of stones and rocks in my soil you can see now i'm starting to work on the flower beds bought some uh, slate rock and laying the weed membrane and then you can see the uh, copings were on lilies were in and we were looking good i decided to give a go at building my own waterfall so i used some of the stones and rocks and bricks that i pulled out during the pond build and then once uh, i'd got the rough shape of what i wanted gave it a nice smooth coat of cement that was then later painted with fish safe paint which was masonry fish safe paint you can also see there that i made myself a little upside down floating fish tank which did work quite well she worked very well unfortunately it was a real pain to clean that didn't last too too long in the pond and here we are just having a quick tour of around the pond at that stage you can see the waterfall there in action and then a little while i wasn't overly happy with the waterfall and the filtration i had at the time wasn't fantastic so i decided that the raised area that I had made, I was going to make use of that and turned it into a backy river. So it was all full of uh, different size gravels, some slate, and then shed a load of watercress. You'll probably remember this uh, little clip from my intro to uh, my videos, which will be changing shortly. Uh, unfortunately, though, the backy river didn't last all that long either um, because it was a, a cheap pvc liner no matter what kind of silicone i used i just could not get the seal uh, done very well between the uh, water blade and the liner and it kept losing water so in the end i swapped it for a backy shower and as you can see there it's working quite well but that didn't last too long either before i decided it was time to uh, build a bigger one So as you can see here, I'm already removing uh, the flower beds, starting to dig them out. Um, yeah, that took a while trying to get the spade in there. It was an absolute right palaver, compact it down an awful lot. That pond was up for a good couple of years, really. And um, you can see there all the slate um, that I've removed. I'm trying to save everything ready for my next projects as I go. Um, 
the fish unfortunately weren't very well at that time going through bacterial issues uh, so I decided that uh, I was going to need a couple of vats you can see there as well I'd upgraded uh, to an extra pressure filter as well as the box filter and the backy shower it was a small pressure filter that one and then bought a little vat for me uh, fishies in the pond and what I was doing with the soil I've made a slightly raised area through one side of the garden as you can see here and um, filling that up with soil as I went and then that next section you'll see that uh, what we do with that shortly I also picked up another blue vat because uh, the fish I had at the moment uh, were not very well any new fish I was getting in um, did have some fry on the way uh, and whatnot I didn't want to cross contaminate them so uh, the fish currently in the vat that we just saw were the healthy fish uh, the fish that are left in the pond are the poorly fish all that's left in the pond at that stage was the orf which they were being collected later on that day and the uh, healthy fish are sitting there in the pond did buy a couple of other new fish along the way this one was from Danny's Koi channel a lovely Jin Matsuba and then you can see here I'd started to work on the next section of the raised area of the garden uh, filling it up with soil as a go that area is uh, now complete brought a few extra trees along the way as well so it was getting there so what i decided to do i'd moved all the healthy fish into the larger blue vat and uh, all the unhealthy fish uh, that were still going through bacterial issues were in the uh, the smaller black vat that was uh, the Blagdon Pond that was in the um, pergola area because it was a lot warmer in there and that helped and what we have here is a bit of underwater footage of the healthier fish And then this was the uh, Matsuba that I managed to pick up from uh, Danny's Koi Pond. So as you can see now, it was drained as much as the uh, the pond pump was going to do. Uh, we then had to get the uh, sump pump in to pump the rest out. But uh, I've moved all the watercress and backy river into some buckets, uh, as you can see there, and then started digging out the uh, black planter. And again, that was a task and a half. Filling up the uh, raised area there. And eventually we managed to get that emptied. The lilies I also saved. I've got some fry. They finally arrived. Uh, all healthy and looking good. They were from uh, Jack the Bolden Reefer. But they came. these ones, uh, as they were the year before, they actually came from Daz's Koi Farm. And I still have a few of them in the pond today. Thank you, Daz. You can see there the pond is now being uh, dismantled uh, kept raining so had to kept getting the sump pump out to redrain it and whilst doing all the building work still keeping a close eye on both vats and looking after the fish so the liner then finally come out and the amount of brackets um, and everything that held this together it wasn't an easy task and you can see they just got to get the underlay and carpet out now and there you can kind of see how many brackets uh, i've used on the inner side and uh, all the sand and everything that was in the bottom that was actually going to be used uh, during the next pond build and there were all the brackets i'd already taken off um, from the outside if memory serves me correctly there was 48 corner brackets and about 20 straight brackets so there was a fair few brackets 
And you can see now that uh, the old pond was dismantled other than the uh, concrete posts. And now I'm digging a trench ready for the uh, to lay the concrete for the sleepers. I did this because that way I knew I was working and starting from a level platform. Um, even though the sleepers themselves weren't all the same size, it did make it a little bit difficult, but at least I was starting from a level playing field. And you can see here, I'd uh, swept up some of the sand from the base of the pond and used that uh, in, in the trench I've just dug. Compacted all that down with the uh, tamper as well. So all the sand is now at the bottom and you can see why I ended up with a three step pond instead of just a two step pond because of this large lump of concrete that I've come across, which we do get it out in the end, that bit anyway, uh, but there is more concrete, which you'll see uh, in the next part. But that's, that's the concrete I pulled out of that little hole that was in the flower beds at the bottom. Right, so it was now time to uh, start mixing the concrete for the base. As you can see, I did it all by hand. Again, more hard work, but uh, we got there. You can see there, laying the base, uh, well, laying the concrete collar down, ready for the sleepers. Again, this... Uh, wasn't an easy task doing it by hand, but as you can see, the end result looked pretty darn good. So here you can see um, that the uh, dig has now started. Only gone a about four more inches down off the top layer so far and as you can see pulling out an awful lot of uh, rocks stones um, an awful lot of rubble on my soil so it wasn't exactly easy to dig um, and there's another pile that I'd already dug out as well but the uh, grass area that I was making uh, was finally about up to level I'm just tampering it all down in between the rain and as you can see, the concrete had fully set by then as well. So yeah, then after that, it was on to the main dig. Uh, started off just digging straight down, removed two of the uh, the concrete posts. That's not the bottom drain hole. That's where the concrete uh, came out of. You can see how much they were they were buried. Um, they could have had a lot more concrete on them. Um, but one bag per post was plenty. You can see as well the amount of rubble. Um, I was pulling out during this dig absolutely crazy but I have got the uh, the grass area now all sorted weed membranes down under the weed membrane there is a uh, thin layer of sand cement mix uh, so that can all go hard ready for when the grass is laid and um, around the edge of it I put a uh, batten of wood as well just so I've got something to uh, to staple to and you can see here the batten of wood and the uh, sand cement mix there up to the level of the batten. It was then time to start filling up the uh, the next raised area uh, with the dig. And you can see there a big old pile of soil coming up and uh, a hardcore base I was making ready for when eventually I do get my uh, shed put up. And there's a sand cement mix now uh, over that base but that comes uh, later. Here it is all leveled off. There's going to be gravel on the soil area there. Shed on the uh, hardcore area. And then you'll see in a second behind, uh, behind the wheelbarrow, there's uh, more soil. And then uh, started filling my uh, first bag. First of many, there was 13 in total. That was a nightmare shifting 13 of them. Uh, there goes the squirrel. Yeah, so this is where I discovered the concrete going through my pond went right the way through my pond oh what a palaver so uh, rather than just smash it up like i've been doing with the uh, slightly smaller sections you can see there's one there at the uh, very top of the screen there that keeps popping up that was a good two foot lump of concrete 
and then where them bags are there was another one uh, another post came out there and now i'm investigating to try and dig see if i can find a behind this concrete we did find that it was sloped down just showing you here some of the size of the rubble that i've been pulling out i mean that that's not a rock or a brick that's an actual pebble um absolutely huge but yeah so digging digging down the back the concrete sloping backwards but as you can kind of see there uh, i found a hole underneath and what's in that hole the worst thing that it could have ever been a working water pipe i spoke to uh anglian water they had no idea that existed um, but they did confirm that it is in use and it's run off from the uh, roads which is a pain so i couldn't smash up that bit of concrete and move that water pipe without it costing a fortune so what i did was rebuild the step as you can see here i'm leveling it off this step was the biggest pain in my backside because it ended up costing me an extra six seven hundred pounds on the liner three times as much as it was supposed to cost because of a step but oh well got the bottom hole drain positioned working out roughly where i wanted it and then it was a case of digging the trench and uh, getting the right height getting it all level ready to go uh, at this stage now the step is level that i'm standing on and the bottom drain is also all perfectly level just gotta start digging the trench now where that bucket is as you can see as well it's not soil i'm digging out anymore at the bottom of this pond it is literally all just rubble and you can see the colour change between the brown soil and now the orange base. Um, it's just all hardcore, crushed hardcore. But that did make and does make for a very good draining garden, which is a bonus. But yeah, just buckets and buckets of this stuff. Crushed hardcore, pain in the backside. But yeah, so it was now time to uh, start working on the bottom drain. So it's just dry fitted there at the minute. So I'm just gluing it up now, gluing up this section, putting the airline in as well. Make sure I've got that hole big enough for the uh, for the airline. You can see there, this is a, a Dave at Coastal Koi bottom drain uh, where the airline comes in at the back. So I've just reshapened and widened the uh, the trench, ready to go. And that, but the bottom drain now fits in there, and I've dug my uh, pit the other side for the bottom drain to come out. Gluing up day getting the bottom drain all glued in as you can see there it's gone all the way through and up so I've just chucked in a tiny bit of soil there uh, because I'd actually dug that hole a little bit too deep it was about four foot deep um, but it needed to be about three foot nine three foot ten so chucked a bit of soil in underneath them just to make sure they're all perfectly plumb and level and coming up at a right angle and not at any funny angles because that could have made things a lot more difficult. Now that I'm happy that everything's level and perfect, I got the old cement out again, mixed up a couple of buckets, one for the bottom drain itself, and then you can see there further down the pipe where the hole is going through the wall, put another lump there, I let that go off, and then I could uh, fill the rest in with concrete and then uh, fill in the uh, pit on the other side of the wall but yeah that's all all brilliant to be honest it's the first bottom drain i had ever fitted uh, all the other ponds i've ever built have all been above ground and pump fed uh, this was the first in ground and bottom fed so uh, yeah you can see there all nice and plumb and level this cement as well i sealed up the hole uh, from that end with cement which was a bonus got all my drains covered so it don't get full up with water Got a wheelbarrow load ready to chuck in. That was the last bit I dug out, so I thought I might as well throw it back in. You can see it's very hardcore based. Um, but yeah, that was all good. Time to tidy up for that day. While I've been doing this though, all the fish, these are the happy, healthy fish in the blue vat down at the back of the garden. And as you can see there, they are all doing absolutely fantastic. These are all the, the newer ones that I'd started purchasing whilst building the pond silly really buying new fish whilst building a pond but i'm me <laughs> but yeah as you can see they're all loving life in there at the minute bear in mind this is the middle of winter this was about november time and um, last year so they're uh, they're doing all right at this moment in time 
And that was back when my Tencho was still a Tencho. And the Benny Kikikuri there, one of my favourite koi in the pond. Koi, he's grown. He was 32 cm back then. He's around 50 now. Just short of. So, yeah, he did well this season. That's the new one I got from uh, Danny's Koi Pond. These, though, are the, the poorly fishies. Now, there was 30 in the little pond to start off with. And as you can see, I'm now down to about five koi and three or four tench. And uh, you can see that white one at the front there. Doesn't even look like a koi anymore because it's missing half of its dorsal. Where it had a huge ulcer down its back. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, none of them made it. But what can you do? They're all in the uh, little blagdom vat that's in the uh, front pergola there. Still running on all the old filter system that was powering the uh, the main pond at the time. Got the backy shower there. I'm about to set up as well. And uh, that's just running on the uh, the pressure filter currently. But there's only five fish in there, so that's a 30,000 litre pressure filter, that one. And it's heated, so that ain't a problem. And that pressure filter had already been running for a year or two prior to moving them into here. But I'd only turned the backy shower off because of the heat. The fry, still doing fantastic. As you can see, growing really, really well now. Had some crackers in there from uh, Daz's Koi Farm. And then that was it got the uh, bottom drain fully concreted I did a, a concrete all the way down the pipe just to make sure the water pressure from a 12,000 litre pond wouldn't move or damage the pipe in any way um, and then just top that back up with uh, soil as well as the uh, trench here that was the soil I had left and then I got these few bags here that I uh, eventually lift up and uh, chuck in there as well but, uh, I left a, a small gap just so it was easier to do the pipe work, but and then we smooth this off and level it off with some uh, soil as well shortly. Well, there you go, guys. That's uh, part one. Um, hope you enjoyed that. That certainly took some uh, some time editing through. Uh, I think there was nineteen videos. Um, I went through to make that uh, twenty minute clip. So, uh, yeah, that's where I got to at that stage. Um, I hope I've earned your subscription today. If I have, then you'll be able to see part two, which is coming out next week, on uh, where I progressed from after cementing the bottom drain in. Obviously, uh, all the concrete that I needed to do for the pond is now fully set at this stage, so it's a case of getting the sleepers, starting the build. Um, so, yeah, I hope I've earned your subscription today, and you'll be able to see that uh, coming next week. So uh, I haven't edited that one yet, uh, so a uh, lot more work for me to do, but as work's quite quiet this time of year, and there's not a lot I can do out there, because uh, still raining, as it always is. So uh, yeah, I'll get cracking on the next edit, and we will catch you all on the next one. <laughs>